Okay, everybody, it's time to get down in the groove. Bob Dylan. Came out towards the end of 1988. I believe it was, or no, uh, towards the end of May of 1988. I believe it was the 30th or 31st of that year. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a pretty big Bob Dylan fan. Um, but man, I, I don't know. <clears throat> I think... If you take back from, you know, if you go back to Empire Burlesque, I mean, that album was so just really bad with horrible, horrible production. You know, then of course you had old Knocked Out Loaded, which was again another, whew, another album to blow by. And then of course you got Down in the Groove. Now some people claim that this is like his self-portrait of the 80s. And um, I guess so. You know, there's a lot of cover songs on here. You know, and he would definitely, um, you know, tackle that a little bit more towards his uh, albums in the early 90s where he was doing a lot of folk covers. You know, he was kind of getting back to his roots a little bit, you know, and kind of getting a little bit of that influence of his earlier, earlier years, his Woody Guthrie kind of, you know, his kind of Woody Guthrie phase there, you know. But yeah, Down in the Groove, this only went to number 61. So at this point, Dylan was pretty, he was pretty battered, you know, but Dylan was full force live. He was in that never ending tour. He was with Tom Petty, of course. And, um, you know, he was with his friend there, Petty, and he was also joined by some other big artists, of course. And of course, eventually uh, brought together the super group known as the Traveling Wilburys. Now, you know, I'm not really big, not, not really big on the Traveling Wilburys. Yeah, you know, I did kind of like that song, Handle With Care, you know. But, you know, Dylan was, he was pretty busy. You know, he got together with, you know, Jeff Lynn and George Harrison. George, uh, during the late 80s, George Harrison had a, you know, had a, he had a pretty big revival with his uh, Cloud Nine and, of course, Roy Orbison. And so many of these big, you know, Guys were all getting together, you know. And plus also Dylan was um, part of that. And see, at the time when he was re recording Down in the Groove in 1987, um, it said here that um, recording started as early as March of 87. And at that time he was doing um, the movie called Hearts of Fire that pr bombed pretty bad. It was only released in Australia and uh, starred Rupert... Well, started Bob Dylan, but also this other guy, Rupert, I don't remember his last name, but he was in some of those Shrek movies. He, um, I think he voice acted, and uh, I think the second, the second and third Shrek of those, you know, him, uh, the sequel to Shrek and Shrek 3 or whatever. Um, but, but, yeah, a lot of people seem to just really batter this, this album pretty badly. He did have a whole bunch of songs, a bunch of outtakes, I believe, from this album. But yeah, I don't want to go bother too much in the whole death thing of this album. You know, it's, I want to try to keep it as short as possible. Just kind of, you know, not try to get too much of the info and too much of this and that, you know. Um, but however, it charted pretty highly because I, Norway and, you know, in that niche area there, they were, uh, they were eating up Bob Dylan. That album went to number seven over there. And I believe in the UK it only charted in the top 50. So at this point here, Dylan was kind of a little bit low on the low scale here. And, you know, some people were uh, kind of, uh, I, don't know, I guess some people weren't really digging his, his style of music during this time. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and get started as the album starts off with Let's Stick Together. Now this was written by uh, Wilbert Harrison, who, uh, he was a North Carolina resident. You know, he was born and raised there. Um, and did a pretty big song. He covered that uh, Mike Stroller song, you know, Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. And of course, uh, the Beatles covered it on their Beatles for Sale album. And um, I really think this opening track is a lot better than You Wanna Ramble off of Knocked Out Loaded. And, um, and the album cover too as well is from that never ending tour, I believe. 
um, the way they, um, the shot of Dylan. Yeah, I think it was from uh, March the 11th of 87, I believe, during that, that big tour that he had. When he's with the, uh, the Heartbreakers. Yeah. He has recorded over in uh, Power Station, New York City. Um, also, you know, uh, London. Sunset, you know, Sunset uh, Sound. Yeah, so I, re I really do like this opening a little bit more than that, that other song. But yeah, I really, really love the groove of this song. Of course, you got uh, some really... You know, if you, you know, some of these names here, uh, Randy Jackson, who became the, you know, the American Idol uh, judge, um, Steve Jordan. Now, Steve Jordan, I love Steve Jordan because he was off of, um, he played and I think he produced Continuum with John Mayer and also played on, a, he was also on a, the, the Try album, that really great live album that Mayer did, you know. So really great drumming here. It was recorded in May of 87. Um, so yeah, it was first called Let's Stick Together in 1962 when he recorded it. And then it was changed to Let's Work Together in 1970 when Can't Heat did it. Yep, and that was a number 26 hit off of their album Future Blues. Um, yeah, and Brian Ferry, also covered this song as well. So pretty good stuff. You know, I really like the harmonica here. There's a little bit of a grit into the song. It's a really, really pretty good bluesy song. So you've got a good song there written by Wil Wilbert Harrison. Well, it was written by, uh, yeah, it was written by him, I believe. Um, yep, yeah, then after that is When Did You Leave Heaven? Um, this was written by Walter Bullock and Richard Whiting. Um, it says here that he was very successful, or he had pretty big success in Hollywood during the late 1920s, writing songs such as uh, the song When Did You Leave Heaven. He was nominated for a Grammy Award um, from the 1936 film Sing Baby Sing. Um, he does a pretty good, uh, yeah, it's really not that bad of a song. I do like, uh, you know, some of the people on here, Jack Sherman, uh, Stephen Shelton on drums. Um, the only thing is, though, that's, like, that opening, oh, God, that opening, like, right when the song kicks in, that really heavy synthesizer, I really, not really liking that, um, but anyways, there you go. When did you leave heaven? It's, I'm not really a big fan of it. Okay, and then after that is Sally Sue Brown. This one's kind of a fun one. You got Bob Dylan, of course, on here. And Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols. Um, bass, Myron Gumbarker. Uh, drums, Bobby King and Willie Green. Um, this was recorded over in Sunset Sound Studios in 87. Well early 1987. Now this song was written by Arthur Alexander. Now I really like him. You know, he did a, he wrote a song for the Beatles, wrote Anna Go to Him, and he also wrote that song, You Better Move On, from uh, the Rolling Stones. I think it was off of their, uh, I think it was off of their uh, 12 by 5, I believe, or one of, one of their earlier U.S. albums. Uh, I do like this one. It's kind of fun, but still has a little bit of that 80s kind of cheesiness. Um, yep. Um, yeah, it says that Sally Sue Brown is back in town in that very tight skirt, and with her big bright eyes, she captures her heart and inspires the hottest fantasies. <laughs> Lay at your bed, Sally Sue Brown. Please let me love you, baby. Don't put me down. <laughs> Pretty good stuff. I, I do enjoy that song. Okay, then after that, this is a Bob Dylan composition here, and it's Death Is Not The End. Um, I, I really kind of really like this song. Um, 
This was actually an outtake from, if you believe it or not, actually from Infidels. So you got all the Infidels people on here, Mark Knopfler, Alan Clark, of course, from, uh, you know, of course, Mark Knopfler produced that. I think he helped produce Infidels, I believe. Um, Robbie Shakespeare and Sly Dunbar, they're here, and Clyde King, definitely. I was recorded in May of 83. Of course, there were some overdubs and overdubbing a little bit later. But yeah, I really love this. Um, I really love the lyrics, too. As when you're sad and when you're lonely and you haven't got a friend, just remember that death is not the end. Falls down and does not mend, just remember that death is not the end. Not the end, not the end. I, and I really love Dylan's, uh, he kind of feels a little sad in this song a little bit. And I really love the use of space, too, as well. Um, there were several people that covered this, including Nick Cave. Of course, he's kind of a <laughs> kind of a weird, kind of avant-garde kind of singer. And plus, PJ Harvey. So several people have covered "Death Is Not the End," and I really like that one. That's good. Um, and then after that is another Dylan composition. This is I "Had a Dream About You, Baby." <laughs> this one's fun. Um, you got Eric Clapton here on guitar. Now this was from the. Uh, from the movie, the Hearts of Fire movie. You know, that movie, that tank that I was just mentioning about or whatever. Um, it was directed by Richard uh, Marquand. Um, yeah, it's a little bit kind of like a, a budget version of A Star is Born, kind of. Yeah, once again, a tank pretty bad. Um, yeah, I do like the fun grooviness of the song here. I, I like these very funny song, uh, excuse me, these funny lines here, such as, standing on the highway, you flag me down, said, take me daddy to the nearest town, I had a dream about you, baby, I had a dream about you, baby, last night, late last night, you come rolling across my mind, <laughs> good stuff, uh, I do, I really do like that song, if there was a good song on the album, that would definitely be one. Um, and then you get the next song, which is called Ugliest Girl in the World. Um, this was collaborated with Robert Hunter, who was, the, uh, who was a lyricist for The Grateful Dead. And at this time, too, as well, Dylan was kind of, um, I, I believe he got together with The Dead. And they did like a live record, uh, they did kind of a live set during the summer of that year and came out with a live album a couple years after called uh, Dylan the Dead. Excuse me, Dylan and the Dead. <laughs> so you got here some of the. Uh, um, well, you got Randy Jackson, Steve Jordan. Um, so yeah, um, this actually dates back to the early '60s, I believe. Or no, never mind. Um, Yeah, it just says that it was co-written by Bob Dylan. Um, you know, once again, I'm not really kind of a fan of this. It's, it's kind of okay, and the lyrics are a little bit, ugh. And ugly, she's so ugly. You know, the, back, the background singers. Yeah, Madeline Quebec and Carolyn Dennis doing that. Plus also some covers as well by uh, Michael, I can't even pronounce that last name. Yeah, anyways, yeah, that sounds all right. And then you get Silvio, which is, again, another Robert Hunter, Bob Dylan collaboration. I like this song okay. Um, you get Bob on vocals, and, or obviously guitar. Um, it says here that they're not quite sure who played ukulele and mandolin. But you got keys with uh, Nathan East, bass Mike uh, Baird. You know, uh, Jerry Garcia, Bob Weir, and Brent uh, Milan from uh, you know, The Grateful Dead. Um, I do like it okay, you know. Um, it has a little bit of a folky kind of a, you know, it definitely has that Grateful Dead sound, you know, definitely for sure. Um, but yeah, I do like the nice pleasant mandolin. Um, and uh, Sylvia was actually inspired by a Lead Belly song called uh, Something Bull Weevil. So that's quite interesting. 
Okay, and after that is 90 miles an hour down a dead end street. <laughs> I shook my head there. Um, this is this is a really good song. Um, Hal Blair and Don Robertson are the ones that wrote this. Um, they said here that they wrote some songs for Elvis, a couple of songs for from him. Um, they said here that um, Hank Snow covered it. It was a number two hit on the country charts in the country charts in 1963. Um, so you got some backup vocalists with Willie Green. I love the his deep voice. There's a lot of deepness within within some of these background vocalists. And I believe that's Willie Green. So you got uh, Jack Sherman on acoustic guitar. I know who that is. Uh, Larry Klein, Willie Green, like I said, Bobby King. Um, yeah, really good song. You know, we really, you know, I, I love like the last kind of la line or the last stanza where he says, 90 miles an hour down a dead end street, you know. Pretty good song. And then after that, you got Shenandoah. I really do like this. This this song is actually pretty good too. You know, um, this was actually a traditional song. And of course, it's you know about the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. And I've been there when I was really really young. I um, I believe my dad and you know my brother and I we traveled over to Shenandoah. Um, of course, that was many many years ago. <laughs> Um, but anyways, a pr really, really good song. You got people like Nathan East and Madeline Quebec and Carolyn Dennis, of course, um, backing vocals. So pretty good stuff. And I really like the harmonica, too, as well. It's a little bit kind of, um, it's got a little bit of that folky, but a little, bit blue, a little bluegrassy as well. And I really like that, how he can kind of blend that in a little bit. Yeah, so it talks a little bit about... Um, You know, people that covered it, including Bruce Springsteen and Tom Waits that covered this. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good song. I really like that. That's, that's kind of another really good one on the album. And then the end of the album is Rank Strangers to Me by Albert E. Brumley. Um, so you got Bob... Um, Covered by the Stanley Brothers. I don't know who they are. Um, please, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it says here that Alan Klein had worked with Peter Gabriel and Robbie Robertson. That was, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a slow groove. Um, but there you have it, folks. But also there was an outtake, too, as well, off of um, a Dylan comp, uh, of course, a Dylan-written song called Night After Night. Um, but yeah, there you have it, Down in the Groove. Now, I think to me, in my opinion here, that I think this album is a tad better. I mean, it's not. Really, I'm not really saying as much about it or praising it, but I'm thinking it's about that tad better. And I think down, or excuse me, then knocked out, loaded, and for sure, <laughs> Empire Burlesque. Um, of course, it has a much better opening track. Um, and like I said, I love um, I Had a Dream About You, Baby, Shenandoah, uh, 90 Miles an Hour Down Denon Street. Those are probably my favorite off of those albums. But um, yeah, I think it's quite better than <laughs> those preceding albums there. But of course, the next album is definitely one of the best albums that people can say hands down is probably the best album of his career in the 80s, you know. Yes, yeah, so a little bit after that, you know, he comes out with the Dylan and the Dead, the live album or whatever, and uh, comes out with that great, oh, Mercy, that's going to be my next album to talk about. So great stuff. You know, those three albums, yeah, out of the three, I think Down the Groove is probably the best, I think, in my opinion. But once again, I'm not really saying that's not really you know, making it more elevated, you know. <laughs> Anyways, folks, till then, take care. Bye-bye. I know some Dylan Elias, Eliases are going to get me, but, you know, I'm going to get you. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.